Welcome guys, season nine just popped in PUBG and in season nine, we got some major changes to how the game is evolving. The game is moving towards a free to play model and there's quite a few indicators that <laughs> indicate this. I'm going to go over what those are and why I think that we're about to go free to play. Another thing we're going to talk about is some of the changes to the matchmaking because that have been messing up a lot of people's normal play patterns. Uh, let's just jump into the game here. And what I'm thinking about here is not only that map selection got removed in EU, that is definitely going to affect a lot of people who have been used to playing with map selection. It's also that certain game modes such as TBP Duo is gone. EU is still a big region uh, compared to North America. North America is a smaller region and is struggling far more with getting players into the games. As an example, in North America, you can't even play solo ranked. It does have solo ranked FPP unlocked. However, there's not enough players to unlock it. And this also is a problem for other regions in other game modes that have been removed. Players struggling to find something new to do in the game because their preferred game mode got removed. Obviously, this is an evil necessity that needs to happen because the player count is dropping. If you don't have enough players to start the different queues, then you can't have them and it's hurting the game more than it's helping the game. But there is a workaround to this problem of not being able to get into solo ranked or perhaps not getting the game mode you like. And that is the perfect transition to the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. Because if you want to play ranked, like I said, and you live in America, then the only way to do that right now is to VPN to a different region. I would suggest trying out NordVPN and connecting to a central EU server so you can experience what solo ranked is like for yourself. The same thing goes if you live in a region where your preferred perspective of choice was removed with patch 9.1. For example, Oceania servers have very few options available and the servers in Southeast Asia have a lot more to offer, including map selection. It's also a great service to use if you want to view other countries' Netflix libraries, as NordVPN still works to get access to the American Netflix library, for instance. But most of all, a VPN is a great way to protect your data and browse the web anonymously, and a NordVPN subscription comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Finally, you can now get 68% off NordVPN, only $371 per month, Plus, you get an additional month free if you use the link nordvpn.com slash wackyjacky. So click that link in the description or use the coupon code wackyjacky. So next, let me talk about why I think the game is about to go free to play. Because there are a few indicators of this. Number one, pretty obvious to start with because this is what you see every single day you start the game. News. This pop-up right here is is very controversial a lot of people are complaining about it it's it's really annoying that you can only select a do not show today a pop-up like this is what i would expect from a free-to-play game this is something that pops up every day it advertises the g coin of the game that we're also going to talk about it advertises different skins that you can buy so it is a direct uh, billboard to advertise the skins in the store and the store itself recently received an overhaul. It now looks a lot better, which is not a bad thing at all, but this is also indicating that the game is gonna have a bigger focus on selling you skins and other items you can buy in the game, such as maybe emotes. Why I think that this is an indicator is because again, this is like what I would expect to see from a free to play game. The more you focus on doing stuff like this, the more it kind of indicates that this is going to be your main monetization model going forward. The G-Coin is probably the most obvious indicator that we are indeed about to go free to play. Look at this. This is like buying gems in a mobile game, buying V-Bucks in Fortnite, or not that I ever did that. A system like this is designed to make players spend more money in the store than they would normally do. Let's say there's an offer for 750 G-Coin in the store. There's a skin you want to buy. It costs 750 G-Coin. If you go in the store, you can choose between 500 G-Coin or 1000 G-Coin. You could do a combination of 500 and 100 G-Coins to get to that 750, which would mean you would spend $3 right here and $5 here, getting you 800 and 10 G-Coin because there's a bonus of 10. 
or you could just spend ten dollars and get a 50 bonus g coin so you would get 1050 g coin what are you gonna buy well most people are probably gonna buy the 1000 offer and get 1050 g coin so you buy this offer and you get your skin for 750 g coin that leaves you with 300 g coin the next time there's an offer in the store for let's say 500 g coin you want to buy a new skin to 500 g coin well you already have a 300 g coin and then you're going to go to the store you're going to look uh should i buy two times 100 or get the 500 g coin where i also get a bonus of 10. And you see what this does is constantly makes you spend more than you want to do. This is a very obvious psychological thing and PUBG Corp are not uh, evil for doing this. All free to play games do this. This is pretty normal. And another reason the G coin system is also pointing towards free to play is because this is a perfect way to refund you the 30 bucks you spent on the game by giving you 3000 G coin. And they're probably going to give you a little bit more. They're probably going to give you like 3,500 G coin because, well, then you got a little bit extra for your trouble. So then they refund the game, they make it free to play. No one can really complain because they got the value back of what they spent in in game currency. And going free to play right now might not be the worst thing to do because the game have been losing players over a long period of time. There's still a lot of people playing this game and it is still a great game. However, getting a few more new players in the game, getting them to experience killing some bots, making them feel like they're really good at the game, and then letting them spend some money in the store and stuff like that, it makes a lot of sense. It, it just seems like a good business model at this point. The current state of the game is something that kind of invites free to play closer as well. The last thing I want to touch upon is the new map Paramo, which is, in my opinion, a really good and fun map. I, I really do have a lot of fun playing this map. It's only available in TPP squads and FPP squads though, without solos or duo enabled, which is a very strange decision for a brand new map that you put in the game. How can they not? What is what is the thinking around squads only? I need to understand that like what is that that decision? Why? Why are we going squads only for a brand new map? It's, it's very confusing. I know a lot of you guys are confused about this. I know a lot of us would love to play this in solo or duo, and squad might not be what you want to do. Very often, you might not have a full team to play squad with, and you don't really feel like doing random squads, so you can't really enjoy the new map. Also, your stats doesn't count when you play the map. Your stat tracker on your weapons won't even count when you play the map. There's a lot of weird decisions, and it feels like a bandit solution to force in a new map in a game where you shouldn't really be making new maps. But that doesn't really change the fact that it is an extremely fun and good map, and I would love to just play it more. I would appreciate if this map got replaced with Karakin at this point. I think it's much more fun than Karakin, which would also be a way to still maintain five maps in the map queue, which definitely is, is maximum. You shouldn't have more than five maps. Already, five maps is too much obviously I, I think i think most people agree with that so season nine definitely has brought a lot to think about it really makes me think that we are about to go free to play in pubg i've never seen as many signs pointing towards that as we do have in the game right now but what do you think do you think we're going towards free to play what do you think about this whole seasonal map thing I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And yes, I will read the comments. So please share what you think about this below the video. And I'll see you guys next time.